Helia Celestia. Rastafari. Hail him, His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, the first. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Elect of himself and light of this world. <laughs> Isolin Selassie, another Nayibingi fire reason. Yes, sir. Empress Isolin, uh, how would you describe your life as a Nayibingi woman compared to the way you live before sighting the liberty? Oh, my. It's like coming from the darkness into the light, you know. Like everyone know you grow up a certain way under the wings of your parents and you're taught certain traditional things and you know but you know just coming of age and, and living life and going through experiences and, and learning and gaining knowledge and wisdom you know you come to know certain things for yourself me myself uh, I was raised up basically uh, in a family where the women in my family were very strong. I mean, from my great grandmother to my grandmother to my mom. Basic black American Baptist, you know. And uh, uh, so last day I came into my life, mom just, just threw a number of people around me and word sound and power I was hearing from different places and just a number of things. And, and you know, getting into my scriptures and learning about the Bible and different little things about that and reading His Majesty autobiography and just history on Ethiopia and, and things that occurred around the world and comparing it to the prophecies and the things that I learned in the scripture mind and, and that just revealed a whole new light to me and it gave me an insight you know and, and when I learned that the Father said seek His face that, that started my journey there so now I know what that face is. I, I know exactly who he is. I know who I'm supposed to seek. You know, and I know where my strength lies. In his imperial majesty. Haile Selassie. I am king of Ethiopia. Bright moon star. From the darkness came the light. And he is the bright and morning star. Haile Selassie. I live in Ethiopia. Haile Selassie. Isolate. What and who inspired or strengthened you throughout your years as a Nayibingi daughter? Yes, sir. Oh man, that's a that's a blessed question because uh, first and foremost, Selassie I guide and protect me through every single solid movement of my life. So all praises go on to him first. But mine, just just love and strength basically came from reasoning with my brethren and sisters around me that's in my daily company my elders you know uh, here in America and abroad you know um, just reading different literature uh, books uh, history uh, biblical scriptures you know it was just a whole different mixture of things that inspired me you know because when you seek the truth and your heart desires it he will give you what your heart desires but you have to go unto him with your whole heart you know? so I mean when I decided that at that time in my life that that's the move I wanted to make he granted me his mercy and he showed me the path to take and you know just slowly and Day by day, and through His grace and, mer grace and mercy, I make it, you know. So give thanks and praise for that, Father, for all your guidance, your protection, your love, and your strength, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding. Continue to bless I and I from this day forward. This I pray in thy blessed name. I listen to I live in rain five more. Rastafari, I live in rain five Yes, Empress. What word sound would you like to give to the daughters who may be watching this video? Ah, uh, enough word sound and power for give. Uh, first and foremost, though, always love, honor, and respect. Highly Celeste, I am Empress Mene. But they are Alpha and Omega. The beginning with no end. The first and five are the creators of life. 
Um, for any woman that may be seeking the liberty of Rastafari, uh, the most important word sound I can possibly give you is to just seek His Majesty for yourself. Don't decide to come into this liberty uh, for the sake of getting with a brethren or, or being with a certain group of friends or just because you think it's a good fashion or fad or what have you. This is a serious thing. I, it's nothing to play with. It's life changing. It's mind altering. Your conscience is uplifted. The things in life that you used to do of Babylon, you don't desire to do anymore. You start living with cleaner hands and a purer heart. You start knowing your place in life. The knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding that you gain from seeking the knowledge of Rastafari, learning that knowledge, absorbing that knowledge, and applying that knowledge to your life, I can give you the best sense of peace, love, and strength that you could ever imagine in your lifetime. But you have to want to change away from the things that you used to do. Because we were all brought up and born and raised in the Babylon world. But, you know, just through life and through time and through experiences, you know, we, we come to truth and right so we know that everything in the world ain't good. We have to live in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. So I just want to give everybody a word sound and power who may be looking at this video right now. If you come into the to the liberty of Rastafari or this knowledge that you want to learn about Rastafari, make sure this is something that you really want to seek with your heart. This is not a fashion. This is not a fad. This is a serious thing of life. It can change. It can alter. It can save your life. Mind. So just be strong and stand firm in what you learn and go forward in righteousness. To each and every one on the four corners of the earth, always hail his majesty. I, the Selassie, I, King of kings, Lord of lords, conqueror of the tribe of Judah, elect of himself, light of this world, I and I, bright and morning star, his divine majesty, I, the Selassie, I. Selassie, I. Could you give us a, a little taste of your uh, poetic side? Yes, I, you know, for about 20 years or so, I've been doing a little poetry here and there. And so I say, I just bless I hope with this gift. So I want to share this little piece with ones and ones called Repatriation because this is something we should seriously consider, Mom, because the time is now to prepare to repatriate out of our Africa for Africans, those at home and those abroad. Repatriation. We need to go where we can build our own nation, our own government, our own education. The times are wasting repatriation. We need to go where we can build our own nation, our own government, our own education. See, for a very long time, my bloodline been in Babylon, well over 500 years strong. Been through some really rough days and nights in a continuous fight for life. But from the darkness comes the light. We paid dues through a whole lot of years of blood, sweat, and tears. And lost a lot of people to fears through generations of slavery and suffocation. Building a nation of pure vexation. Prophecy. Written so it had to be done. But the blessing of deliverance is promised to come. So prepare for the journey of life. Get ready because the time's getting close. Well, we all getting ghosts to be gone. Headed for the mountains of home and be gone. Never to return to Rome. Repatriation is a must. So we got to teach the youth and they got to know the truth about their roots. Let them know that they came from the lines of kings and let them know the purpose of a virtuous queen. You see, royalty is in our genes. But wrong things made us lose sight of our purpose in life. And that ain't right. We have to build up on the love and the trust cause repatriation is a must. Repatriation. We need to go where we can build our own nation, our own government, our own education. The time's a waste and repatriation. I, let's see, I live in rain for I go. Bless them.